Akliuska. At Kluska, we've been making pottery for at least 300 years, from 1600 or about then. The clay is not very good round here for agriculture, but it's good for making and crafting pottery for everyday domestic use. Here at Kluska, we use the clay because there is a deposit here in the village. The color of the clay is the color you see here. It is made with prepared clay. Before it was made in the earth basins which are next door to the pottery, but now it's made by specialists who make a sort of paste which is free of all impurities. After that the potters use it to make their pieces. Making pottery at Kluskla is done essentially on the wheel. The potter grabs a piece of clay and bungs it onto the center of the wheel so that it becomes round. With his wet hands he starts to caress the clay and model it. First he makes a hole in the middle without forgetting to leave a bottom which he makes later. He goes slowly without rushing things. Under his fingers the clay stays docile and obedient and takes its shape. If for a moment the hands of the potter leave the clay it is to scrape off the clay that sticks to his fingers. Finally, with the aid of a small piece of plastic, he perfects the shape of the piece, then he lifts it and puts it on a plank. He carries the plank out on his shoulder and places it on the trestles in the courtyard to dry, as long as it's fine. The earth at Kluskla, like others, is porous, so if we cook it under a thousand degrees, it does not glaze, so we have to make it waterproof to contain liquids and other things. So we put a glaze on it. A glaze is glass which is shiny. Before we glaze, we have to put on the glaze, that is to say clay diluted in water. It is always the same sort of clay, but it's colored by oxides, natural oxides. We use five colors, white, red with colorant or red clay, green where we put copper oxide in the white, black where we put manganese oxide in the white or red, and cobalt to make a blue. Once the color is on the pottery, that is to say completely assembled, then comes the decoration. Where did you learn all that? Here, here in this workshop. But you must have done other studies. No, no, not at all. Because all the decoration is traditional, I learnt it all here. Here in the village? Yes, here in the atelier with Mr. Jean Perdri, who has left. De bon main. You've got good hands. Yes, they don't tremble. <laughs> Here's another piece that's been turned. It's Kluska clay. It's been turned and the profile on the exterior has also been formed. It's been glazed with a white glaze and then it's been decorated. The most delicate part is the drying between the turning and the baking because it has to receive all the other various stages. 
It's the part of the work that looks trivial, but actually it's the most important part between the moment the piece leaves the wheel and it arrives completely dry at the furnace. Once the piece has passed through all the various operations, it reaches the furnace and it's cooked for the first time. Here we have an uncooked piece which has been decorated and we bake it in a wood or gas oven at approximately 1000 degrees for the first time and it comes out roughly the same color. Here we have an uncooked dish and here we have one which has been baked once. It's been hardened by the fire. It's important it's cooked at exactly the right temperature and in good atmospheric conditions. It's a complicated game to use the heat of the oven just right, for if the temperature varies, the colors of the pottery will change, and so will the texture of the pots. Once the first baking has been completed, the time comes at last to glaze this piece, that's to say, making it waterproof. Why? Because it's not to make it more beautiful. It's because if you put liquid in a salad bowl like this, it would pass through it by the morning, because it's porous and because it's been cooked at a temperature less than that which vitrifies the clay. Here we make pottery which is visually simple for everyday use, which doesn't cost a lot. We use as little fuel as possible, so we cook it as little as possible, and that's what's called low temperature baking. Here at Kluskla, we cook with a low temperature and we glaze. China is cooked at a higher temperature and porcelain at a temperature higher still. Once the pottery has been cooked for the first time, we waterproof it. We cover it with a waterproof coat of green. The green is a silica. Silica melts at 1200 degrees and because we bake at around 1000 degrees, we are obliged to mix in a fondant, which is called alkifu. The alkifu is mixed with the glaze in very precise quantities and the piece is covered with a ladle or simply dumped in the glaze. Once the piece has been varnished, it's rebaked at 982 degrees. It's a little bit less than the first baking for technical reasons. And so this mixture of alkifu, varnish and glaze vitrifies the piece and we take it out of the oven and we find it brilliant, beautiful and above all waterproof. Brillante, belle, mais surtout imperméable. Opening the oven is an important event in the pottery making process. It's a moment of intense emotion when one discovers whether the baking has worked or whether an unfortunate accident has wrecked everyone's efforts. After 11 to 12 hours of cooking in a gas oven, each of the 2,800 pieces are examined separately, carefully tested and separately arranged. Later, all the pottery with its warm colors and charming motifs finds its home, sometimes at the other end of the world, a long way from the calm village of Klutzkla. <laughs>